Hey, what up, y'all? It's Mr. Cruz here, your friendly neighborhood producer, back with another video. And in today's video, we are going to be taking a look at FL Studio's new plugin, Vintage Chorus. Now, by my understanding, the um, Vintage Chorus is modeled after this. It's called the uh, Juno 6 from Roland. So we're going to be taking a look at what that entails and kind of how it translates into what we have now here with Vintage Chorus. But before all that, let's go ahead and go over some of the parameters that we see here with Vintage Chorus. I mean, I, I, can't, I can't exclaim enough. Free updates for life. Bam. We just got like, you know, three new plugins in their most recent updates. Um, so this is going to be one of them. And I've already tested it out and it sounds, oh man, I'm, I'm loving this. For starters, with the Roland Juno 6, they had two modes. Um, and they actually, they, they had two modes and apparently the programmers or the developers didn't think of it that people were actually able to press uh, mode one and two together to kind of create a third mode, which kind of wasn't planned. It was accidental, which you can still do that here. So you can click any one of these two modes um, and that kind of activates those modes. But if you hold shift, you can click both of them and then you'll have both modes running simultaneously. These are essentially like kind of two presets where um, it already has predetermined values for uh, the, the delay and the modulation. So pretty much for the LFO and the modulation. With edit, it gives you free range to mess around with the delay modulation and um, or the LFO and the modulation. We have uh, times one and two. So this kind of corresponds to the, the delay that is affecting the chorus. Um, these work in tandem. So it, it kind of acts as uh, the separation between these two delays that are functioning simultaneously. So the only way to have only one of those impacting their sound um, at one given time is to pretty much turn the other one completely down. So now um, the delay two is no longer active and we're only getting the effects of delay one. But as soon as you turn this up, now those two delays are working at the same time. And feedback right here, this is actually the only effect um, out of, or the only parameter out of all of these things here that was not originally present in the Roland Juno 6. But what this does is this is a feedback coming from the output of your entire vintage course that's being fed right back into the input. Uh, so if you do mess around with this, you kind of get like a flangey uh, drone kind of effect with this. And then uh, this right here, the H pass is uh, just a high pass filter. And you can kind of see up here in our um, notification or our info panel, uh, uh, what frequency range you are actually going to be uh, cutting off is from the low end and uh, only allowing the high end to pass through. So uh, it's a high pass filter. Okay, here under modulation, we have the start phase uh, and then the LR phase, so the left and right phase. The cool thing about this is um, I will I will turn the noise, actually, I'll, I'll give you an example when I go through this, uh, but the left and right phase kind of affect the amount of phase that's going between the left and right um, signal but then the start phase deter determines where within the chorus that phase is beginning so this one can kind of be give you some cool creative freedom but this one right here is really really cool as a matter of fact if i unmute the noise gate you'll hear how the just the noise is kind of hiss like the hiss sound in the background is going between like the left and right kind of uh panning between them so i'm gonna do that right now so make sure that you turn it up i'll give you a little warning to turn your headphones up and then turn them back down once i finish with this all right so check this out, it's really cool. And so the cool thing is uh, you kind of get that phase effect, but if you turn it all the way down, all that's gonna end up happening when there's no left and right phase, all that's gonna happen is you're gonna hear the, um, the effect turn up and then turn down, turn up and then turn down. So check this out. And then if we turn it all the way up, you'll kind of get like this wishy-washy sound. It's kind of weird. Either way, I thought that was pretty cool that you could kind of hear that effect taking place even when there's no sound uh, passing through. And then we have tempo sync and tempo sync affects the speed right here. Uh, so if you're looking at our info panel, again, up here at the right, you'll notice that it can kind of change in between time um, but if you are sorry, time signature, but when you turn it off, it goes in terms of Hertz. Now, now a really cool thing with this is if you enable tempo sync 
and then you right click and hit set, it'll give you uh, different resolutions that you can kind of set the uh, the speed to. So you can kind of determine how fast that panning effect is gonna happen or the tremolo effect is gonna happen. And of course, lastly, you have these two different types of LFO or low frequency oscillator. You can have the sine uh, which is this one down here at the bottom. So that's a sine wave, or you can have it going through a saw wave. Lastly, in this section, we have levels, and this determines uh, mono input means that it will mono the signal that's coming in. So if your signal's already in stereo, this will turn into mono. You might get a pretty cool different effect out of it. Uh, you can invert the wet signal. So whatever's kind of coming out and you can, I mean, inverting the polarity always kind of does something weird to any kind of sound. And then the noise gate will turn the noise gate off. So you'll notice that when I unclick this, when I don't have this selected, you'll hear that panning back and forth. But, and then you can also turn up and down the level of that noise, but that's always like really cool, especially if you're making a lo-fi B, uh, like you want to have those kind of uh, elements and that kind of texture in there. And then of course you've got your gain knob and then your uh, mix knob. All right, we got all that stuff out of the way. So now you know how it works. So now let's go ahead and mess around with this effect. Um, so I've got the same loop from the previous video that I have been doing. So we're gonna go ahead and listen to this loop and then uh, mess around with our vintage chorus and see what kind of cool sounds we can come up with. Let's start with mode one and two and technically three, which is one and two together. <laughs> Ooh, I like one and two together, right? So I like that third option that we get. And I think with adding like a stereo imager to kind of spread that out uh, would be really, really cool. Or never mind, I just had mono input selected. I'm an idiot. Let's go through edit. And actually, instead of editing, we're gonna kind of cycle through some of these presets and see what kind of presets they're giving us. Oh, this crystal twister, yo, this is dope. So I, I really like some of the sounds uh, and the, the presets that we're having here. I will say this, um, I, I, I'm not really a huge fan of the stock chorus that FL gives us. This will definitely, definitely replace it for me, um, especially when I'm cooking up lo-fi beats and lo-fi melodies, just like with a piano and a reverb and this man, you've got something really, really dope there. So once again, the vintage chorus modeled after the uh, Roland Juno 6, Really, really dope. Um, I'm really liking this. I'm definitely going to be kind of saving this and favoriting this plugin because I can see myself using this a lot in the near future. Shout out to ImageLine for not only giving its users something for free, but actually providing value, like giving us something that's really, really good and really useful. Well, that's what I got for you guys. If you feel like you've learned something, make sure you hit the like button. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about Vintage Course and if you've used it in any of your beats or any of your like productions. I'm really interested in knowing what your opinion is on the uh, Vintage Course. And of course, once you are done making a super super dope, lo-fi, mellow, sad beat. Make sure to head over to BeatStars, upload it so that you can start selling it and monetizing your passion because BeatStars is the number one platform to be able to do that on. If you're interested in joining me over on BeatStars, hit the link in the description. Make sure to use my code CRU230 and I'm gonna hook you up with your first month of BeatStars completely for free. Well, that's what I got for you guys. It's your boy, Mr. Cruz, out.